Happy Sunday, you all. Welcome to Beyond the Veil. I am Adina. Glad to meet you. Hi. Love you. Bye. All that good stuff. So, um, I just did a little quick Liam Payne reading. And because Diddy came out, Diddy or some powerful man in the industry, but because of Diddy being exposed um, the way he is and locked up with the wealth of tea that he has and other you know things that he's associated with there are sex within hollywood who feel like they are um in the hot seat and i think that liam's passing has something to do with some association some associates of diddy or some associations of his dealings with parties or events that diddy sponsors procures anything like that anyways it made me think about mary j blige in some interviews that she did in the past right after Aaliyah passed away mary j blige seemed to be really shook by by the passing of Aaliyah. and as i just finished that reading and i took a break sipped some coffee and thought about the next reading i was going to do because i didn't have a plan this morning um i thought about that i thought about those interviews that she did where she just seemed really shook like it was an eye-opening moment for her but she seemed really scared and I just want to look into why Mary seemed so scared if she was or if she was just shook up by the fact that someone so young someone that so close to her that she knew someone so famous you know could pass away so tragically <coughs> or <coughs> If there was another reason she was concerned. I'm sorry, there's a bird that's caught my attention. A black bird. And the way it's soaring, it's not, you know, flapping. It's just soaring and gliding like a plane. It hasn't even flapped its wings yet. It's literally soaring. Almost enjoying the crisp blue skies in the air. Anyways, I'm sorry, you guys. Not sorry, because things like that aren't coincidences to me. If it comes back in my vision, since it flew out, then I'll talk to it. All right. Mary J. Blige, Most High Mother and Father God, thank you for this day, thank you for this gift, thank you for this platform, and thank you for the people that join me on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Can you allow me to conjure up the spirit, the soul of Mary J. Blige? Mary, what's the 411, hun? Mary J. Blige, come. What's the 411? You got it. You got it going on. Mary J. Blige, come and give me the 411. Mary J. Blige, you are being summoned. Bring me your soul. Bring me your energy. Come here. Mary J. Blige, what's the 411, hun? Mary J. Blige, talk to me about how you felt about Aaliyah's passing? Why, why did you seem so disturbed? Was it mourning? Was it grief at her loss in general? Or was it fear of something? Those interviews that you did after the passing of Aaliyah, it, it brought so much awareness to you. Can you talk to me about the time after Aaliyah passed and what that was like for you and how you felt about Aaliyah's passing when it happened? Mary J. Blige felt like Aaliyah's death had a lot to do with two things. Her freeing herself from certain circles and associates and certain circles and associates freeing themselves of her. I remember Mary did talk about, and I'm not going to quote her verbatim, but people you know, that you hang with, something like that. But this has something to do 
with Aaliyah's associates and people attached to her and the toxicity within the dynamics of those relationships. First and foremost, that's how Mary felt allegedly. Challenging. Now this is usually jail for me if I'm talking in literal terms. Maybe Mary feels like the person who had something to do with this is in jail, but not for her passing. Maybe Mary J. Blige feels like the person who had something to do with this should be in jail and they're not. Or Mary J. Blige felt like at the time she too might have been in an environment sort of like Aaliyah's where she was around people that she didn't know that their intentions could be that extreme. It may, I, I believe that it, it, it was like, I don't know if Aaliyah thought that someone, the people around her would conspire like this. And she knew that they were dealing with some unsavory people because they run, ran in the same circles. But it also made her feel like you never know who could be conspiring against you within these circles and environments that we frequent. This was in the early days of Mary J. Blige's fame and her rise to fame. She had become famous. And this made me think that this reminded Mary of the things that come along with one's rise to fame as you're trying to get on and become famous famous the things that you experience because mary experienced the same thing she knew all too well from personal experiences and because she knew about Aaliyah's experiences because they're both celebrities and and if we know the things that we know think about the things that the celebrities knew she knew. She was aware. But she'll never tell. She hasn't. It's like she said some things, but probably realized that she was saying too much and then stopped saying altogether. We don't hear about how Mary feels about things going on in the industry, and we never really have. Since then, we hear about her personal struggles and triumphs, triumphs but... We've never really heard her be that open and vulnerable about something affecting her like that in the industry. And there have been plenty of things that have happened, including this current Diddy situation, but we haven't heard her speak about that either. Moving forward, she was never that vulnerable again, and she felt like she had good reason to not, to not be. I don't know if Mary felt like Aaliyah shouldn't have gone on that trip. If it's a trip that shouldn't have gone the way it did. Maybe it was a last minute. I believe something about that trip was last minute or hurried or rushed. And Mary knows that that was a part of, I believe, the setup of it all. Now, this Queen of Pentacles is interesting. I'm going to hold off on saying that until I clarify. Mary felt like that trip was or that trip was planned by the ones who wanted this to happen. And even the challenges that happened on that trip that seemed to be 
just, you know, accidental and coincidental. Those challenges were even induced. So it's like, because of all the induced challenges, the results could have or would have happened one way or the other. But something wasn't right about that plane. There were induced challenges, allegedly. This was in the early days of someone's career who could uh, who could be a fire sign male. <clears throat> Leo, Aries, Sagittarius. Because we're talking about back then before they were a king and they were still a knight. Not saying that this person was the head orchestrator, but this person had some involvement because at the time they were a knight. They were seeking to become a king, very ambitious. Goes out, makes moves, and worries about the consequences later because they know that they can overcome them. So if an opportunity arises now, I take it. Very capitalistic. This person may have been working to help orchestrate. Allegedly. Mary knew that it was her in her best interest in her hopes and fears position to never speak out about that again the way she did. And me felt like she didn't just come to that conclusion on her own. This feels like she was aware that it was best after she did speak out vulnerably to not do that again, just not talk about it anymore. And as a result of Mary deciding to not talk so much, she has been able to avoid being caught up in a lot of litigation and litigious conversations because she decided to not be vulnerable anymore like she was when she was doing those interviews because there's so much tea that Mary has that is litigious to her and other people. Mary has been able to avoid a lot of like an Aaliyah-like fate because this was the situation that Aaliyah was in that Mary realized at the time she might have been in too. And she decided not to go to war like that because she was aware that she might not win. That's a battle that she fight at all costs. And so she's been able to maintain herself by being Bennett and not in it. So I wanna clarify some things. I don't know what I did with the sub below card. Oh yeah, here it is. This queen of pentacles in the sub below. Before I say that that's a woman. I would like to say, okay. <laughs> I feel like a conspiracy theorist, but where there's smoke, there's fire. Because I'm just reading the cards. There was... <sighs> Aaliyah was being stubborn. Again, I see an administration of something to knock her out. Because she was effing up the plan by being too anxious and nervous. She was being stubborn and so she had to be carried on to the plane because she didn't want to get on i'm looking at the three of wands in the above position of what mary knows and her crowning that that plan and all of it that trip seemed last minute but it was put together for a reason last minute and the challenges that came up on that trip were induced the cards that I flip have to do with Aaliyah being too stubborn and to get on that plane willingly and her being carried on because she didn't want to fly 
back like that under those circumstances. And on the bottom, I see her being administered something to make her go to sleep because she was messing up the plan. Now, on the bottom, this three of, I mean, this queen of pentacles in reverse, me thinks that this is Big B. And I'm not saying that B was a part of the group calling the shots, even though I've did a reading on this before and she's come up, especially in relating to her and Aaliyah and Jay-Z and Aaliyah, especially in my Jay-Z and Aaliyah reading. There seemed to have been plans for Jay-Z. He, he was already making business moves to be a businessman. And Aaliyah was not going along with the program with Jay-Z. He seemed to be able to influ... I don't want to say... Okay. Listen, I believe that a, a fire sign male who was gaining power back then, doing business with some powerful entities who could have made a thing like this happen. In exchange for one, you get the other. Because Jay-Z seemed to be the power player or this fire sign male allegedly seemed to be of value. It seems that Aaliyah again was trying to break away from I, I believe she wanted to start doing movies. I believe she may have left the music industry or wanted to leave the music industry for a while and focus on Hollywood and doing movies and becoming an actress. I believe that she was becoming non-useful because she did not want to do music or do business with certain entities anymore. I believe that her concern was with going on that trip was that she was concerned about a conversation or some unsavory dealings she had with someone who was in a powerful position, spiteful, petty, vengeful, and may have made some threats. These two have had words not too far from Aaliyah going on this trip. And if this person couldn't have her be with her and benefit from her, i.e. becoming a Bonnie and Clyde, a power couple with her, then she wouldn't have it at all. Because there was another person that this person could have had this with, but with Aaliyah being a contender, As a result, though, Mary J. Blige has been able to maintain her wealth, become awarded and highly respected in music, you know, make her way from music to acting. And that's how she maintains herself because 
she keeps her mouth shut. If I keep going, then I'm gonna continue getting into this situation with Aaliyah. But Mary J. Blige, I would say, learn to be quiet. Um, after those interviews, All right, that's all I'm gonna say about that because I can say more, but I just wanna wrap this up because this is getting into a whole nother situation and I'm having a sensory overload. Love you guys, bye.